Um, what I'd love to share with you guys today is uh, some of the findings that Playnomics has found as we've worked with different game companies. And um, what we really want to kind of espouse the industry and what we hope, especially companies in Southeast Asia, start to do more of is really to use segmentation, not only to understand who your players are, but to really adapt the game in real time for those specific players individually, right? Playnomics um, provides a data mining platform, um, but the, really the insights that we have come from my co-founder, who uh, was actually Sergey Brin's thesis advisor at Stanford. Uh, so we share a lot of the same patents that uh, Google was founded on. And that's in interesting to you in the fact that, you know, be able to package up those insights in a way that is actually actionable for the game itself, right? Everyone knows today how hard it is not only to start a game and acquire players for a game, but the vast majority of that effort often gets wasted, right? You see 90% day one drop off, you see players in a very crowded marketplace, you know, a couple years ago, it was a viable strategy to try and get up on the leaderboard, get up on the app store. Now, there, you know, I, I come from San Francisco, where neighbors of ours, um, you know, the, the large publishers, they have two to three million dollar marketing budgets, not for the life of the game, but for certain weekends where they launch these games, right? And if you want to compete on that basis, going head to head against that is 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 probably not a long term strategy. What you want to be able to do is speak to the players that you do have independently in a way that really resonates with each of them individually that allows you to get the most out of each one of those players. And what I'd love to show you today is just a couple ways to do that. Whether or not you use Planomics, I think segmentation and the ability to parse your game in different ways allows you to speak to many, many different audiences. Right? And so that focus that everyone typically has on acquisition and then monetization, we see as a very kind of short-term perspective. Because as we all know, whales are not, are, not, are not acquired. You do not go out and acquire a whale. What you need to do is nurture, develop, and really establish a relationship with the player that's gonna get them to spend money. That engagement, that retention piece has to be personalized. It has to be directly tailored for that individual because one size fits all, no, one size fits nobody. What we want to do is instead focus on, on why people play, how they're playing, looking at their behavior within the game to actually parse who they are today and who they're going to be. Use that data within the game to predict who are, who's going to be your spenders, focus your best incentives on them, maybe generate third-party revenue from everybody else. Here's an example. Right? So here's one of the first games that we work with. One of the most simple kind of bumper games that you might see, what kind of behavioral metrics do you think can come out of this? What kind of behavioral differentiation? It's huge. We, we ran some segmentation or clustering algorithms against it to, kind, to find the different types of players within the game. So if you look at the graph on the left, you can see that there's competitors, collectors, socialites. This being a social game, our developer had thought that the vast majority of the value was going to come from those socialites, that blue bar at the bottom. But really, when you look at how they're playing and how they're spending money, it's these collectors, these people who aren't very good at the game, but they touch everything and they play all the time. So imagine somebody gave you the opportunity to talk to these three groups of players within your game separately. What would you do? In this case, what we did is we ran a different offer for our competitors, and we compared it against a control group, right? So in terms of spend, in terms of time played, in terms of all the metrics that matter, by speaking to this group, we're able to vastly outperform what the overall default message would have been, right? So this speaks to really the opportunity for marketing 101, right? By segmenting players, you develop insights. By having those insights, you open up new opportunities that not only drive better conversion, increase lifetime value, all these things are from a personal experience. And, and you can think about how you play games, right? You play very differently than maybe your sister, even though you're playing the same game. 
Imagine if the game adapted to who you are. Imagine if that content was adapted to who you are specifically and your motivations. Segmentation is what allows you to treat those players differently. The analysis of that in-game data, that in-game player behavior. Some of the things that are, you know, uh, that people do are maximize your good players. Monetize the ones who aren't going to spend money in lots of different ways. You could even cross-promote those while not at the expense of your whales. What this targeting allows you to do is start to develop these playbooks around each of the kind of objectives you might have, such as keeping players early, monetizing your, your monetizers even more. Um, and, and what I'll launch into is basically a, an example based on all the different kinds of segmentations that you, you could run right off the bat. You know, people often ask, what, what, if I don't have an analytics tool, if I don't have that uh, ability to do this, what, what are some simple segments that I could be running within my game to start viewing these players, number one, and then number two, eventually be able to talk to them? A good place to start is maybe cohort analysis, which is breaking up players based on when they join, or lifetime segments, which are where players are in their life cycle based on time, level, those kinds of things, grouping them together, and then starting to combine them with other segments such as location, such as the milestones that they've reached. In this case, why don't we dive into an example of how to speak to players through the early life cycle. And this is key because from our data, what we've seen is that if you're able to keep a player in their first seven days playing more than three times, there's a 90% higher likelihood they're going to be playing in 30 days, right? So given that amount of information, don't you want to do everything you can in that first early incubation period to really drive that engagement, drive that return rate, form those habits for those players in a way that's specific to them, right? Some players are going to need tips and tricks. Some players are going to want that opportunity to monetize early. And that's all based on who they are as players, right? This is one way that we look at players, is whether they're strategists, soloists, competitors. All these are more psychographic types that using sophisticated algorithms you can, you can develop. But at the same time, you don't need to be doing this. You can just focus on the first seven days and start to parse people within that first seven days with a battery of different personalizations. And here's some examples. By understanding wh which, one, uh, which segments people fall in, there are different message types, right? There's personalized content, tips and tricks, and there's different channels by which you can speak to these players, whether it be in-game messaging, out-of-game, push, email. Traditionally, these channels have been vastly used as a one-size-fits-all messaging. Email traditionally has been slightly targeted, but not really tied to the in-game behavior. It might be tied to the level that you're at, but are you a competitor? Are you a socialite? What are the right incentives that will speak to these audiences in a very targeted manner, right? You have to be able to be testing these on an ongoing basis, and then you have to automate the actual delivery of these mechanisms. So here's an example of things our customers do in their first, in their first week. For players that are struggling in their achievement levels, Give them tips and tricks. The bar up there is a frame, customizable to the specific segment that a player falls in. In this case, this is somebody who obviously isn't you know, getting through the level. Make sure that they're the ones seeing the tips and tricks, whereas your experienced players aren't. In this case, that's dividing players in their first seven days into a segment of achievers versus non-achievers. Right? Also what's important, um, especially in a web environment, is the ability to speak to players outside of the game. They might come to your game, they might try it once. The vast majority are not going to come back unless you encourage them to do that. Right? So identify that segment that has a high potential and then use retargeting technologies to speak to them outside of the game in a way that gets them back interested Anytime a player, once again, plays more than three times in that first seven days, a 90% higher likelihood of being that 30-day player, of being that spender. That is where the focus on that marketing in that first incubation period 
we've seen have by far the vast uh, majority of lift for a broader group of players. Special rewards, don't dilute the rewards by giving them to everybody. Give them to your best players in exchange for their retention, in exchange for their loyalty, right? Identify those players which are most apt for that. Deliver this in game. It can also be, as you saw, delivered as a retargeting message outside of the game. But once again, speak to them in a personalized manner. I often play games where, you know, I'll see a message and it says, come back, your elf, you know, your elf needs food. And I think, hey, I wasn't an elf. I didn't need food. This message is entirely without context for me. Is this game really the right one for me? Don't let that happen to your players. Speak to them, identify them, segment them, and then act upon them. Encouraging spend, uh, once the player has spent for the first time, 60 to 70% higher likelihood that they're gonna spend the next time. So this is the highest group for incubation, where if you give them those special offers, the special power-ups, and you wanna keep those limited and a scarce resource, target those to the right types of players. And when it comes time to look at players and see what else you can do with them, Cross-promotion obviously you know, ha has a place in the industry. A lot of traffic is driven that way. But are you giving up your best players when you do that? Are your whales leaving your game because you have a cross-promotion bar in there? There's a very w easy way to control for that, is only show that message to players where you've expended their LTV, where you've gotten as much out of it. Maybe you want to keep them in your network and send them to your game, another game within your network or some of the high CPMs in the industry come from being able to sell a monetizer in your game to, to a third party. So the, the customer that we talked about just now was able to really double the spend of their players by adopting a very personalized system. A personalized system that not only drove more play because players were interested in a message that was tailored to them, but also in a way that doubled the entire engagement levels, right? And so the way we track this was by the use of uh, a cohort specifically designated as a default group, right? So if you look at the bottom blue line here, that is the natural behavior of this segment, randomly sampled across this metric through time. And the important reason to do this is because there was new content being deployed. There were other changes to the game that was happening throughout the deployment of this campaign. But really what we want to answer, answer for management, answer the, for your buyer, is what effect did my marketing have on this? What effect did my segmentation have on this? What effect did actually speaking to these players in a high, highly differentiated manner do for me? Well, it, it's really to, easy to tell if you have segmented the audience, right? If you have segmented a control group versus the groups getting the message. In this case, you know, it, it's over 50%. And really, what's really interesting here is the B group, which was getting a targeted message to increase spend, actually was offering fewer coins than the A group. That's, a, that's an insight that's only possible through active live testing of targeted messaging, right? Of the ability to speak to these players in a way that is very, very specific to them. Once you have these insights, you know for this specific cohort, set it and forget it. Give them the 50 instead of the 100, but every player who falls into the segment, maximize their value that way, move on to the next segment that you wanna test, and think of your audience as an active group of people rather than a monolithic set of variables to optimize for. So I'll, I'll skip through the commercial to make it quick. My, my only point here being that since the, since the dashboard and everything I'm gonna show you is free, um, it might be something you wanna check out. But really what, it, what we wanted to boil up were, was the key points that I've talked about through this entire presentation is, first of all, you wanna track. You wanna track people's loyalties, engagements, score them on different metrics but in a way that doesn't present a sea of information rather than very specific information about a group. So this is 
your most highly engaged players, you're tracking everything from their return rates to how loyal they are, how intense they are. You want to have a whole series of segments that at your fingertips that based on your objectives for that period of time, be able to click upon, dive into, and monitor more and more segments. Um, you know, th these are a lot of the basic ones we recommend people start with. But be able to, to drag and drop content in front of them. You know, set up the mechanism by which not only is content being delivered, but personalized, right? So this is for players who fall into a specific segment. They might get the special coupon. Send a push message to just that specific group, right? We've, we've found push messages and retargeting to be some of the best retention tools um, that, that are currently being adopted. But the vast majority of, of push messages aren't open and lead to you know, uninstalls because they're not relevant, because they're not the right ones for, for them. But if you look at Clash of Clans, if you look at people who are doing push messages in a highly targeted manner, the ability to tie it to segmentation is really the one and only way to get the right results from that action. All right, so you want to measure and you want to iterate and you want to continuously do that because your players are changing, the data is changing, and the, your ability to speak to players needs to, needs to match that. So here, here are the key takeaways. Um, you know, every player in the audience is different. Every player that plays your game has different motivations. If you really want to understand who they are, you've got to treat them differently. You want to use segmentation to do that. You want to segment based on in-game behavior. You can start with very simple things, such as when they joined the game, how long ago did they join the game, whether they spent money or not. And you start to see incredible returns upon that that allow you to really drive interesting insights that you can, you can run these marketing campaigns to figure out who they are. So take that information, and as you run these playbooks, set them into motion within your game. Once you've set them all, dive into deeper segmentation that allows you to do more and more. All right, so just a quick commercial. I think we're, we're coming out with our with a review of all 150 million players that we track in an engagement report. If anyone is interested in receiving that, it talks about the kinds of segmentations that have been interesting to customers such as EA, Ubisoft, uh, Viacom that we work with. Uh, we'll be releasing it next week, but if you want to come give me your business card, if you want to shoot me an email, happy to get you on the list. Um, the other point along the, the platform is to integrate and to start to get those dashboards that's all free. So if you're interested in, at all in that, let me know, and I'm ha happy to set you up. Great. Thanks, John. All right. Wow, that was some really great information. Anybody got questions for John about uh, using their tools? You guys are too shy. All right. I have a question. So, uh, John, uh, where do you guys leave off? Uh, so there's a, there's a messaging component to this. Yes. Do you provide any of the like ad server or push notification pieces of that, or do you is that a third party tool that you, that uh, the developer would have to bring to the to yeah. your, your platform? Uh, that's a great question. I, I should have made that clear. Okay. Uh, all the push messaging, all the ad serving, all the pixel content serving is uh, integrated with our system. Okay. Right? So we don't typically think of ourselves in an analytic system. Mm -hmm. We think of ourselves as more machine learning for marketing automation. Right. right? So. A marketing manager would use our tool, look at the segments, hit a target button, and decide which content they want to push. And in real time, the system evaluates players. And when somebody joins that group, that's the messaging or push that they would see. And, and uh, where is the, the, the segment identifier stored? I, I've got a new player coming in. Yeah. What, what, what exactly is, uh, am I looking for uh, on the app or on the, on the game to, to identify that, that, uh, that user? So the, it's basically stored in our system in the back end at the user ID level. Okay. So users um, basically trigger events. We store a, about a terabyte of data a day based on every event that they trigger. Mm -hmm. And then we use various machine learning algorithms to parse those players into different groups. So you, so you recognize the player when they come in? Yes, we, we see them over time. We see them across games. Yes. 
Excuse me? How much hands-on uh, support yeah. can you supply to game developers? I mean, we have a relatively experienced marketing team, but uh, to get really you know, down and dirty with this, you're going to have to have a high level of experience that we won't have out of the gates. Yeah, and, and so um, we do actually work very, cl the short answer is it depends on what you want, right? So we do have an account management team that literally, um, if you took a look at CSI Miami, Ghost Recon, our team is actually running the in-game marketing for those games. We are happy to train you up. Um, a lot of our team comes from the game industry, and so they use our tools in a way that directly impacts your game. So um, happy to talk to you about it. And how do you guys make your money? We make our money. Uh, we're a nonprofit, so it's all free. No. <laughs> um, we, make, we make our money um, in, in two ways. Number one is all the analytics and the dashboard that you saw is free. To deliver a message using our ad server, we charge a CPM of about a dollar. So it's very much usage based. We also offer a third party ad revenue that comes from either ad networks or uh, direct brand relationships that we have. And for that, we charge a commission of about 30%. And so for your non monetizers, for players we predict are never going to spend money, we're able to generate um, third party ad revenue for just those players that doesn't affect the whales, and then we charge a commission for that. Great stuff. Thanks. Anybody else? All right, let's have a hand for John.